Let's quickly discuss on HTTP redirect and HTTP post binding. So first we can discuss HTTP HTTP request binding. Let's quickly discuss on that. So here basically it's a going through you can say here it's equals to HTTP get request okay so it's basically redirect, uh, redirect binding is mostly used at the time when SAML authentication request sent from service provider to the identity provider and it's nothing but a get request HTTP get request so what exactly it's happening so you can see that you have a service provider and you have the identity provider right so basically service provider is going to send a saml authentication request to idp right that we have seen saml authentication request to idp now as i told that we need to use a method to transfer the uh, request from one party to another for that we need to use some binding so here we are going to use redirect binding so this is nothing but a http get request http get request okay so how you can pass this like uh, uh, so you have uh, like you have a url like for an application you have a url something called abc.com so the url itself using query parameter you can pass this request to the idp using this uh, redirect binding so for example you have the abc.com url so you can just put a pa query parameter like question mark and then you can add here a saml request something like maybe you can see also in your application if you are if you are using any application right now a saml based application so you can just uh, go and check this uh, authentication request you can see that like you can pass the saml request in the url itself as a query parameter saml request is equal to something right whatever the saml request so like this you can pass in the url itself and this is nothing but a http get http get request so redirect your binding is mainly used where like when you are just sending an authentication request to the identity provider like service provider has to send a saml authentication request to identity provider so in those cases mainly this binding used and yeah here you can pass it's a http get request so you can pass the request parameter along in the url itself using query parameter and uh, redirect binding is not feasible for saml response why because the size of the encoded value is large because you can see that uh, the saml response if you can just i'll just show you that also like we have a application onboarding session where we do all those testing so i'll just show you that in the saml request what you are passing you're just uh, uh, giving few information that how you're signing that request uh, you can pass the uh, consumer address who is issuing the request like few parameters you need to pass uh, like four or five or like that not much where in the saml response you need to pass uh, many things right you need to just tell who is signing that response uh, signature part is fine signature value and certificate is fine whatever you are adding and you need to add the complete user attribute information so the, that information is becomes large so the encoded value there is large so that's why we are using not uh, we are using redirect binding there so redirect binding is mainly used like for a like yeah uh, the, where, where the encoded value is not very uh, the length of the, the size or length is not very high it's not uh, big i can say yeah so it, we are not using this in the sample response where is the request uh, yeah it's http guest you can pass in the url as we can see here and uh, uh, what we can say here like uh, it's uh, uh, the message may be signed for the additional security right that's true that when you are signing the sample authentication request whether you can sign or not it depends on the application because here uh, there is no any crucial uh, not crucial i said there is no any critical information you are simply passing uh, the who is issuing the request and the addresses so just you are passing four three or four values and that is not something critical uh, it's just a uh, public values i can say the application address and all so you can sign that also using digital signature or you can just escape that also option that also you can skip that option also many of the application is not using but other many of the applications are using also so it depends on application to application but as per the security it's not there is no any uh, problem if you are not signing that so in some cases we are just signing the request in some cases we are not signing the authentication request but it's just for additional security 
I'll say in practice, all the data contained in a SAML authentication request such as issuer who issuing the who is basically issuing the SAML request uh, has been agreed. Uh, sorry, which contains the uh, SAML ID, uh, ID name, ID policy, and all those, and has been agreed between IDP and SP beforehand. So yeah, what we need to send, we just need to, as I told, that we need to have exchange of metadata between these two party, and from there only we we need to under uh, we need to uh, we can understand it. Okay, how I can generate this AML request and what parameters I need to pass to the IDP so that IDP can handle the request and just uh, authenticate the user and give me the response. Okay, so in that case, signing the request is not a security concern. Okay, when the uh, SAML authentication request contains information not uh, uh, not known by the IDP beforehand, such as session consumer service URL, signing the request is recommended for the security purposes. Yeah, so uh, as I told, the uh, metadata exchange is happening beforehand, where you can just see that, okay, what are the endpoints and addresses of the IDP, uh, so that you can just configure that in your SAML request, so that when a user access the application, application can <laughs> generate that SAML request and send to a particular address, or the correct address, I will say, of the IDP, where IDP can receive that and just uh, go through the request what exactly came and then yeah verifies the user and give you the response token. Okay, so that's where happening in the request uh, redirect binding, HTTP redirect binding. In HTTP post binding, what is happening? Let's quickly discuss that also. Okay, so in HTTP post, what is the difference here and what exactly is happening? So HTTP post binding, you can say is equal to HTTP post. So there we have the redirect binding is equal to HTTP get request, right? But here we have the post, HTTP post call. Now here what happening like uh, here it will not, con uh, it will basically contain the payload means it will not shown in the URL, it will add it in the HTTP post as a payload. That means like this HTTP post, like uh, in this binding, like as you are just transferring some uh, information, a response, so it will not shown in the URL, rather where it can show, it can show in the payload. So that's what it's, so, uh, it's talking about the HTTP post, that it will contain a payload, means it will not shown in the URL, it will be added in the HTTP post as a payload. So whatever the information, like SAML response you have generated, now you need to send from, like I'll say here, like IDP, and you have the SP. So IDP has to send the SAML response to SP. So it will just use the HTTP post uh, uh, binding method uh, to send that SAML response from IDP to SP. So here the response will go in the, not in the URL, it will go in the payload. But you can see in the redirect binding, you have the request that you can pass, it's a HTTP guest, it's a HTTP get request, so you can pass that in the query parameter in the URL itself. Like the abc.com question mark query equals to uh, SAML request equal to something. But here you can pass in the payload. Uh, yeah, and uh, it's basically yeah using this mechanism we are doing here. And uh, here like there is no limit in the size of the message. That for example you have the response. If it is like huge also you can use HTTP post. There is no issue. But whereas in redirect binding you have the issue with the value like uh, the, the the text value, the XML value because it's nothing but XML value. In the SAML we are basically exchanging the uh, data identity data using the XML based only. So yeah, the size can be here large. There is no limit, but where in redirect binding, we have some limit, correct? So this is about HTTP post and uh, I'll say like uh, um, HTTP redirect binding and uh, HTTP post binding are, are called as an indirect binding because here party is not communicating directly. Here you can see what is happening like uh, when when these two parties, I am just drawing here like directly a line, but here here is a browser. So whenever there is a communication from IDP to SP, it will go. It's go. It is basically going through the browser. In these two binding, if I am talking, HTTP post and HTTP redirect. In artifact, we can see that exactly how this is going to happen. But yeah, in this two binding, the data is transferring through browser only. So that's why HTTP redirect binding and HTTP post binding are called as indirect binding because here party is not communicating directly. Like in the case of HTTP post binding, the party won't send the request. Uh, uh, to the browser and then from browser the request will post to the destined location at party 2 like from one party to another party uh, it's going through the from the browser it's not directly it is sending the that request from that uh, from party 1 to party 2 it has to go through the browser that's why it is called as a browser based single sign on also okay
browser based SSO. Okay, it's called as a browser based SSO also. And yeah, indirect binding definitely, as you can see, right? It's not uh, uh, directly it's, uh, sending the information. So that's why you call it as indirect binding also. And it's going through browser. That's why you call this SSO is called as a browser based single sign on. In artifact, we can see some mixture of these like browser and without browser. That's why it is called as a hybrid binding. But yeah, we can see that uh, in the next session. So this is about HTTP redirect and post binding. If you have any confusion, yeah, you can just uh, put in the comment section. We can discuss. Uh, yeah, and uh, let's quickly jump to the artifact binding section. Thank you.